Short Story 116 The Great Pigeon Postponement Bernard Bottomley prided himself on his punctuality. Every morning at precisely 7.43 a.m., Bernard would leave his flat, a crisp copy of the Daily Telegraph tucked under his arm. He'd greet Mrs. Higgins, the grumpy old lady who lived downstairs, with the polite, Good morning! and then head out, determined to reach his office by 8 a.m. sharp. This particular Tuesday, however, fate, or perhaps a mischievous pigeon, had other plans. As Bernard stepped out of his flat, a plump grey pigeon landed right in front of him, blocking his way. Excuse me, Bernard said, attempting to shoo the bird away with his rolled-up newspaper. The pigeon, however, remained stubbornly planted, cooing softly. Look, I haven't got time for this, Bernard huffed, trying to squeeze past. But the pigeon, with surprising agility, hopped sideways, blocking him again. Bernard sighed. Pigeons in London were a nuisance, but usually not this persistent. Suddenly the pigeon tilted its head and let out a loud caw. Then, to Bernard's utter astonishment, it nudged a small, rolled-up piece of paper towards his feet with its beak. Bernard stared. Was this some kind of avian prank? Hesitantly, he bent down and picked up the paper. It was tied with a tiny red string, and upon closer inspection, Bernard saw it was addressed to him, in what appeared to be pigeon scrawl. Scoffing slightly, Bernard was about to toss the paper in the bin when a strange feeling stopped him. Curiosity, perhaps, or maybe a touch of existential dread at the thought of receiving mail from a pigeon. Hesitantly, he untied the red string and unfolded the paper. Dear Mr. Bottomley, it read in a surprisingly legible scrawl, We, the Pigeons of Parliament Square, request your urgent assistance. A matter of utmost importance requires your unique skill set. Please arrive at Parliament Square by noon sharp. Discretion assured. Sincerely, the flock. Bernard stared at the note, mouth agape. Pigeons! Parliament Square! Urgent assistance! His mind raced. Was this some elaborate advertising campaign gone wrong? A social experiment by some eccentric university students? Whatever it was, it was certainly disrupting his meticulously planned morning. But there was something strangely intriguing about the whole thing. Besides, who could resist a good mystery, even if it involved feathered messengers? With a sigh, Bernard made a decision. He'd give the pigeons ten minutes. He'd be late for work, but surely a ten-minute detour wouldn't hurt, right? He quickly scribbled a note from Mrs. Miggins, explaining about the urgent pigeon business, and tucked it under her door. Then, with a mix of apprehension and amusement, Bernard set off for Parliament Square, the crumpled note from the pigeon clutched tightly in his hand. Parliament Square was bustling with activity. Tourists milled around, snapping photos of Big Ben and the Houses of Parliament. But Bernard's attention was solely focused on the pigeons. He scanned the cobblestones, searching for any sign of the flock. Suddenly, a loud cooing caught his attention. A particularly large pigeon with a distinguished grey chest puff strutted towards him. Mr. Bottomley, I presume, it cooed in a surprisingly posh voice. Bernard blinked. Yes, he stammered, feeling a flicker of fear mixed with something that felt suspiciously like excitement. Excellent, the posh pigeon hooted. I am Bartholomew, leader of the flock. Thank you for coming on such short notice. Bernard nodded mutely, his mind reeling. Talking pigeons? This was definitely not in his daily routine. Bartholomew gestured with his wing towards a nearby park bench. Please, have a seat. Time is of the essence. 
Bernard cautiously sat down on the bench, the pigeon perched beside him with surprising grace. As it says in our message, Bartholomew continued, we require your assistance, a matter of national security, you might say. Bernard raised an eyebrow. National security? This was getting way out of hand. You see, Bartholomew lowered his voice, one of our number, a young fledgling named Pip, has gone missing. Bernard almost scoffed. A missing pigeon? Was this all the national security that they were worried about? But before he could speak, Bartholomew continued. Pip is no ordinary pigeon, he explained. He is our, shall we say, air courier? Air courier? Bernard repeated, his curiosity piqued despite itself. Bartholomew puffed out his chest. Yes, Mr. Bottomley, Pip carries messages of vital importance, top secret communiques, you might say, between the various pigeon flocks of London. Information that keeps the delicate balance of the city's avian ecosystem in check. Bernard stared, dumbfounded. Pigeons were the secret communication network. London's avian ecosystem. This was all getting a bit too fantastical, but Bartholomew's serious expression left little room for doubt. Pip, Bartholomew continued, was last seen carrying a message from the, the Regent's Park's Rooks, a message concerning, well, let's just say it involved a rather large shipment of discarded French fries from a popular fast food chain. Bernard couldn't help but snort with laughter. Secret messages about french fries. These pigeons were truly something else. However, Bartholomew did not share his amusement. These french fries, Mr. Bottomley, are more than just a tasty treat. They are a vital source of sustenance for the Regent's Park's rooks during the winter months. Without that information, they could face a severe food shortage. Bernard sobered up. He may have found the whole situation ridiculous at first, but the thought of starving rooks tugged at his heartstrings. So, how can I help? he asked, surprising himself. Bartholomew's eyes gleamed. We believe Pip may have been captured by, well, he hesitated, by a human. Bernard frowned. A human? Why would anyone capture a pigeon? Unfortunately, Bartholomew sighed, some humans have a rather unpleasant view of our kind. We suspect Pip may have been mistaken for a common street pigeon and taken captive. Bernard understood. Pigeons weren't exactly beloved creatures in London. But this Pip, carrying secret messages about French fries, seemed like a rather important pigeon. He couldn't just leave him to his fate. All right, Bernard said, a newfound determination in his voice. Tell me what you know about this human. Bartholomew hopped closer, a conspirational glint in his eye. He is a rather portly fellow with a penchant for wearing tweed jackets and carrying a large net. He frequents a park bench near St. James's Park, feeding the pigeons crumbs, I might add. A disgrace to the culinary standards of pigeons everywhere. Bernard couldn't help but chuckle. This whole situation was absurd, yet oddly thrilling. He, Bernard Bottomley, a man of routine and punctuality, was on a mission to rescue a secret agent pigeon from a crumb-feeding human. Sounds like a plan, Bernard declared, standing up. Lead the way, Bartholomew. And so, with the posh pigeon Bartholomew leading the way and a flock of nervous pigeons fluttering behind them, Bernard Bottomley, the most punctual man in London, set off on his most unexpected adventure yet. Bernard followed Bartholomew through the bustling crowds, the pigeon weaving expertly between legs and dodging selfie sticks. He felt a strange mix of excitement and apprehension churning in his stomach. Never in his wildest dreams did he imagine he'd be following a talking pigeon on a covert mission. 
His crisp newspaper, usually a symbol of his regimented life, now felt strangely out of place tucked under his arm. They reached St James's Park, the sprawling green space teemed with tourists and pigeons. Both Bartholomew surveyed the scene from a lamp post, his beady eyes scanning the crowd. There he is, he cooed, pointing with his wing, on the bench by the rose garden, the one in the tweed jacket with the crumbs. Bernard spotted the man. He was indeed rather portly, with a bald head and a bushy grey moustache. A half-eaten bag of breadcrumbs lay open on his lap, surrounded by a small group of pigeons pecking eagerly. All right, here's the plan, Baron Polymew hopped down from the lamppost and landed on Bernard's shoulder. You'll distract the human, create a diversion while he's busy, I'll swoop in and hopefully find Pip amongst the pigeons. Bernard gulped. Distracting a stranger felt far outside his comfort zone. But what should I say? Improvise, Mr. Bottomley, Bartholomew said in a wink. Just be convincing. With that, he took flight and landed gracefully near the edge of the crumb-strewn area. Bernard took a deep breath and marched towards the man. As he got closer, he could hear the man humming a tuneless song and muttering something about ungrateful pigeons. Excuse me, sir, Bernard said, his voice slightly higher pitched than usual. The man turned, a scowl etched on his face. Can I help you? he grunted, eyeing Bernard with suspicion. Yes, actually, Bernard forced a smile. I'm a pigeon enthusiast, you see, and I couldn't help but notice your unique method of attracting them. The man's scowl deepened. Unique? These are just regular breadcrumbs. What else would you use? Bernard cleared his throat. Well, I uh, prefer a more organic approach. Scattered seeds, perhaps, or even chopped up vegetables. It's better for the health, you see, and attracts a wider variety of birds. The man snorted. Healthier for them? They're just rats with wings. Besides, these crumbs are cheap and easy. They keep the little blighters occupied. Bernard winced at the man's choice of words, but he persevered. But surely, sir, you wouldn't want to deprive yourself of the beauty of these magnificent creatures. Have you ever observed their in intricate plumage, their graceful flight patterns? The man chuckled. Graceful? They poop on everything. Besides, I'm more interested in the squir squirrels. Clever little chaps, those squirrels. Bernard felt a bead of sweat roll down his temple. This conversation wasn't going as planned. Just then, Bartholomew let out a loud paw and swooped down towards the crumb-filled area. The man jumped, scattering the pigeons. Blast those pesky birds, he yelled, waving his arms in the air. This was Bernard's chance. See, they're scared of you, Bernard exclaimed, feigning outrage, scaring these gentle creatures with your, your uncultured feeding habits. The man spluttered, his face turning red. Bernard, feeling a surge of unexpected boldness, continued his tirade. Launching into a long-winded speech about the importance of urban bird life and the ecological benefits of pigeons. As Bernard spoke, Bartholomew hopped nimbly amongst the scattering pigeons. Bernard could see him scanning each bird with a keen eye. Finally, Bartholomew let out a triumphant coo and nudged a small dusty pigeon towards the edge of the group. The man, still flustered by Bernard's outburst, didn't seem to notice. Bernard seized his opportunity. Well, sir, he said, straightening his tie, I believe I've made my point. I shall leave you to contemplate your crumb-based feeding strategy. With a theatrical flourish, Bernard turned and walked away, feeling a surge of satisfaction. He rejoined Bartholomew, who was perched on a nearby bench with the rescued Pip tucked under his wing. Pip, a fluffy grey pigeon with a slightly ruffled look, cooed gratefully at Bernard. Thank you, Mr. Bottomley, Bartholomew said, puffing out his chest. You were most 
distracting. Bernard grinned. The pigeons celebrated. A low rhythmic cooing spread through the park, punctuated by excited wing flaps. Pip, freed from his temporary captivity, preened himself with a relieved shake before joining the chorus. Bernard, still basking in the unexpected success of his mission, couldn't help but feel a sense of accomplishment. He, the man of routine and punctuality, had just pulled off a covert operation with a flock of talking pigeons. Few knew this morning would detour would lead to such an adventure. What happens now? he asked Bartholomew, watching the pigeons coo amongst themselves. Pip will deliver the message to the Regent's Park rooks, Bartholomew explained. They'll know to expect their shipment of french fries. Bernard chuckled. French fries, huh? Seems like a high-stakes mission for a simple snack. Bartholomew hooted. Don't underestimate the importance of french fries to a rook's winter diet, Mr. Bottomley. They're a valuable source of, well, let's just say they provide a certain energy boost during the colder months. Bernard nodded, a smile playing on his lips. He glanced at his watch. It was nearing noon and he was hopelessly late for work. But for the first time in his life, he didn't feel a pang of guilt. Thank you for your help, Mr. Bottomley, Bartholomew said, extending a wing in a gesture of gratitude. The flock is forever in your debt. Bernard shook his head, touched by the gesture. It was my pleasure, he replied honestly, though I must admit this isn't exactly how I pictured spending my Tuesday morning. Life, Bartholomew hooted with a knowing glint in his eye, has a way of surprising us, wouldn't you agree? Bernard glanced back at the celebrating pigeons, then at his crumpled newspaper tucked under his arm. Maybe, he thought with a grin, a little surprise wasn't such a bad thing after all. Indeed, Mr. Bartholomew, he said, straightening his tie. Indeed. With a final farewell coup, Bartholomew and the flock took flight, soaring towards the distant rooftops. Bernard watched them go, a newfound appreciation for the extraordinary tucked neatly into his ordinary day. He may have been late for work, but he had a story to tell, a story about a daring pigeon rescue, a secret message, and the unexpected thrill of stepping outside his routine. And that, he realised with a satisfied sigh, was a story worth being late for. Vocabulary Notes Punctuality, the quality of being on time. Bernard prides himself on his punctuality. Meticulously, in a very careful and detailed way, Bernard has a meticulously planned morning. Scoff, to laugh at someone or something in a way that shows you think that they are stupid or unimportant. Bernard scoffs at the idea of receiving mail from a pigeon. Intrigued, adjective, having your interest strongly aroused. Bernard is intrigued by the whole pigeon situation. Apprehension, noun. A feeling of worry or fear that something bad might happen. Bernard feels a mix of apprehension and amusement. Determined, adjective, having made a firm decision to do something. Bernard is determined to help the pigeons. Rueful, adjective, feeling sorry, guilty or ashamed about something. Bernard feels a rueful pang of guilt about being late for work. Flourish, noun, a dramatic or showy movement. Bernard turns and walks away with a theatrical flourish. Preened, verb, to clean and arrange your feathers with your beak. Pip preened himself with a relieved shake. Gestured, verb, to use the movement of your hand or head to communicate something. Bartholomew gestured with his wing towards the bench. Hesitantly, adverb, in a way that shows you are uncertain or unwilling. 
Bernard hesitantly bent down and picked up the paper. Astonishment, noun. Great surprise. Bernard stared at the note in astonishment. Persistently, adverb, in a way that continues to happen, although someone may not want it to. The pigeon remained stubbornly planted, cooing softly. Elaborate, adjective, carefully planned and with a lot of detail. Was this some elaborate advertising campaign gone wrong? Discretion, noun, the ability to keep things secret. Discretion assured, sincerely, the flock. Apprehensive, adjective, Anxious or fearful that something bad might happen. Bernard felt a flicker of fear mixed with something that felt suspiciously like excitement. Posh, adjective, very smart and expensive. Bartholomew, a particularly large pigeon with a distinguished grey chest puff, strutted towards him. Story written by Google Bard AI Image created by Adobe Firefly AI. Hello, this is Steve. If you enjoyed the story, please would you click on the like icon and take the time to leave a meaningful comment. If you want to know when the next story has been uploaded, please click on the notify bell icon to be notified. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tell your English learning friends so they can benefit too. Thank you.